The countdown is over and the next phase has begun. Title 42 is now expired as of an hour ago. Now the thousands of migrants gathered at the U.S. Mexico borders are trying to figure out what's next. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee and I'm Jesse Pagan. U.S. officials say right now an estimated 60,000 people are gathered near the U.S. Mexico border in anticipation of Title 42's end. They'll now face new rules on applying for asylum. Tonight we have live team coverage at the border answering all of your your questions. CBS 8's Richard Allen is in Tijuana with what's happening on the other side of the border. Our Jasmine Ramirez is covering the situation right now in San Isidro. But we begin with CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe with some breaking information. Rocio? Well, now that Title 42 is officially over, asylum claims are now being processed under Title 8. It's an immigration policy that has been around for decades in the U.S. And what that means is that these migrants and anyone else who continues to show up uh, could potentially become ineligible for asylum and could face strict penalties. Now, new developments in the last couple of hours or so. A federal judge in Florida has temporarily blocked the Biden administration from continuing a migrant release policy designed to relieve overcrowding at immigration holding facilities. The ruling came just hours before Title 42 expired and raises concerns of high number of migrants becoming stranded in Border Patrol custody in overcrowded conditions. Hundreds of migrants are waiting at the southern border for their asylum claims to be processed. Carlos Santiago Rosero is from Ecuador and has been waiting at the border for four days. He says, if other countries had the necessary guarantees for our families, we would go there. It'd be much closer to home and less expensive, but it's not possible. He's here with his wife and two young daughters and tells me they will continue trying to get an appointment to be processed. But Border Patrol officials are now processing migrants under Title VIII guidelines, which means migrants seeking entry into the U.S. will have to prove they left their home country to seek protection from prosecution. There will be a credible fear interview, and at that point, it will be determined whether they will proceed with an asylum case. If, it, if their credible fear interview does not meet the benchmarks of moving forward, then at that point they will be processed through uh, Title VIII, which means that they will be placed into removal proceedings. Under Title VIII, migrants who enter the U.S. without an appointment will not be allowed to apply for asylum if they did not seek it in Mexico or another country. Which means that many of them possibly, probably could be deported. And so those countries are not safe for their own citizens. How could other people seeking safety expect to uh, live uh, in harmony, live without harm in those places? It's just not possible. Santiago Rosero tells me seeking asylum in Mexico is not an option for him or his family. He says that possibility does not exist because Mexico is just as dangerous as my own country. Those who claims are denied could face a minimum five-year ban from seeking re-entry. That is a measure that we've never seen. I think it degrades the concept of asylum and the promise that people seeking safety and safe harbor would be taken in. Now, these migrants are being highly encouraged uh, by U.S. officials to submit their asylum claims through the CBP-1 app, and through it, they are able to set up those appointments. But obviously, if you take a look behind me, there are still dozens and dozens of these migrants and their families that are still waiting around uh, for a chance to enter into the United States and for their claims to be processed. And a lot of these people were actually here, uh, have been here for days, meaning before Title 42 even expired. So what's going to happen? To them and how their claims will be processed moving forward. Well, that has yet to become uh, to be decided. We're live here at the border. Rocio de la Fe, back to you. All right, Rocio de la Fe, kicking off our coverage tonight. Rocio, thank you. CBS 8's Jasmine Ramirez is also at the border right now with what we've seen throughout the day today and into the evening in San Isidro. Jasmine. Yes, well, Title VIII has now been in effect for one hour, but we really haven't seen any change out here. I've seen a couple Border Patrol vans drive by, but they have not been picking anyone up. What we are continuing to see is so many families out here tonight. They're all huddled together, just ready to brace the cold for another night. The situation at the San Isidro border is only getting worse. Here's video from earlier today when a woman passed out right next to the border wall. It's just heartbreaking to see the conditions that are awful. 
I think seeing the women and the children, the amount of small children under the age of five that are out here is compelling. It makes you want to help. Which is exactly what they did. Bridget and Melanie, along with other San Diegans, came down to the border on their own to help. It's thanks to the volunteers and organizations out here that the migrants are being fed. Even with Title VIII in effect, it's unclear how long they'll be enduring these conditions before they're processed. Misinformation remains a major problem, too. Tonight, we talked to Osli. He's from Turkey and was told seeking asylum would be easy once he got to the U.S.-Mexico border. Now he's one of hundreds left wondering and waiting. Tonight, he asked me if I knew when Border Patrol would be getting them or if they'd be sent back to their countries without a chance to seek asylum. He said, what are your thoughts on this? Will they pick us up here or send us back again? And now we have been working to get a timeline of when people will be getting processed, but we haven't gotten any real answers. What we have noticed for ourselves is that it's the women and children that are being picked up by Border Patrol vans. Reporting live here at the border, Jasmine Ramirez, CBS 8. None of this image is just heartbreaking. Thank you so much, Jasmine. We now want to take you just across the border in Tijuana. Confusion is deepening among the thousands of migrants waiting in shelters there with a lack of information making things worse. CBS 8's Richard Allen has been in Tijuana for days now. Richard continues our coverage tonight, talking with people there today on their frustrations as they try to navigate the asylum process in the U.S. Richard. And here in Tijuana, so many of the migrants we've been speaking with say that after making the dangerous journey here in their search for asylum, they want to make sure to enter the United States legally, but they're increasingly unclear as to what that process now means. Sí, hay mucha confusión. Adeseli Funk journeyed here to Tijuana from her home country of Guatemala with her partner and their little girl three months ago to escape the homophobia and discrimination they faced there. Temo por mi vida. Por eso vengo a pedir asilo. Fearing for her life back home, she hopes to claim asylum in the United States. She says it was a dangerous journey just to get here to this shelter. Movimiento Juventud 2000, robbed of all of her money by criminals during the trip. And while she feels safe here in the shelter for the time being, trying to navigate the process to request asylum it's frustrante. It's frustrante. has been exceedingly frustrating, she tells us, especially when trying to use the CBP-1 app, now required in most cases to book an appointment to begin the process for asylum. Cada día, de, a, casi a, a cada momento estamos entrando a la aplicación. She tries every day, nearly all the time to apply, so far with no luck. Meanwhile, at another migrant shelter just around the corner, Good news for Efrain Martinez Reyes from El Salvador, who just learned he passed the first step and is now waiting for an appointment with immigration officials in the next two weeks. Hopeful now that he at least has made some progress in trying to cross the border legally. He says criminal gangs back home attacked him with a machete and threatened the lives of his entire family. Yesenia Ardon is the shelter coordinator here, where they have migrants staying from all over the world. And while there is technically room for 150 people, they now have 180. She says there's not only no more space here, but no room currently at any of the migrant shelters in Tijuana. In the meantime, more migrants continue to arrive as nonprofit migrant rights groups like Al Otro Lado try to help provide them with proper guidance. But essentially, the government has provided no information to the migrant community, and what we're seeing is mass confusion. And Al Otro Lado and other groups like it are working directly with migrants here in Tijuana, providing them legal guidance and also working to counter the misinformation a lot of migrants are now receiving, specifically from human smugglers who are exploiting migrants for their own profit. In Tijuana, Richard Allen, CBS 8. Thank you, Richard.
Right now, dozens of people are being processed after getting picked up on our side of the border and brought over to local hotels. Earlier this evening, several buses filled with people seeking asylum were spotted at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Mission Valley. Some of the people there were transported somewhere else. Others were seen leaving in taxis and cars. The tension buses were also on site. Members from Catholic Charities were also there assisting and providing aid to the migrants. Border agents apprehended some migrants in East County today after they found them traveling through the Hakumba del Zura area. About 300 people were in this particular group. We're told they trekked through the Otay Mountain wilderness. Some migrants say they got hurt after climbing over the border wall, then walking through the Marin Valley and onto the 94 near Campo Road. Many, including children, also say they have gone days without food and water. Estamos muy cansados, no hemos ni comido ni... Algo cansado. Jesse, what, what were they saying? They were saying they were tired. Uh, the young boy said he was tired, and so did the father. As word cansado means tired, yes. It is unclear tonight what border agents plan to do after detaining these migrants. Some of them say they are from Colombia. Another said he came all the way from Turkey. Migrant families seeking asylum may have to follow a home curfew and wear GPS ankle monitors while officers decide if they can stay in the country. It's a potential new policy from the Biden administration. Officials say under the policy, migrant families won't have to be held in detention centers. ICE agents will be able to monitor and locate the adults who cross the border unlawfully. If asylum officers find they aren't eligible for U.S. protections, they would then be deported within 30 days of their placement and get a five-year ban from the U.S. Make sure to stay with CBS 8 for the very latest updates on the ending of Title 42. We'll put the developments on our website, cbs8.com. You can also follow us on social media or download our free CBS 8 app.